This video is sponsored by PCB Way. Okay guys, so Mike here. So this holiday season, unlock incredible savings with PCB Way's exclusive coupon-based sale. Where the more you spend, the more you save. Your proofs are free during this sale, so hurry and visit PCBWay.com now for unbeatable deals. PCB Way, your pathway to innovation. All right, guys, welcome back. So I've gone with this bigger rotor in hopes that I could get enough torque. Each of these chambers will have one inch square mags and they're pretty heavy. And so I'm hoping that I got to take these coil holders out though, because it's obviously it's in the way. I'm hoping that's going to, uh, see if I can get this off of here, dag nab it. Hopefully it's going to have enough torque to get that guy spinning. I don't know. We'll see. Wish me luck. Stay tuned. Here it is without the coil stands. And so it's these one inch cube magnets are pretty heavy. So I'm hoping that it'll, come on, I'm hoping that it'll give me enough torque. But unfortunately, something is way off here. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's wobbling big time. I think there might be something wrong with the um, the transition piece I have here. Yeah, you can see, like, that's wobbling big time. That's not going to cut it. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys, I got it working on the stepper motor. Which I can't believe that because that stepper motor requires a lot of torque to turn. But someone gave me a suggestion on making the arms bigger and it works. Getting some really good output. I need to make some stands though for these coils because it works better when the coils are laying horizontal than vertical. I mean, it's working great now. But I can't believe it. I didn't think I was going to get it to work. Yeah. Okay. I got to make some stands for it, though. Stay tuned. All right. So I've got this guy ready to go. It turns out that wobbling effect that I saw before that I kind of thought might have been, as was suggested by a commenter, because I only had one magnet in there, but it turns out it wasn't. It was because I had used... A spacer underneath the mount on the stepper motor and the spacer was terribly off-centered so let me get this guy and now it spins really well yeah it spins really well so I've got to finish putting the screws in even though I really don't think those magnets are going to come flying out. Those are one-inch cubes and they're press fit in there. But for uh, safety reasons, I do have to finish that up. But yeah, that should work good. So maybe with this heavy mass, I mean, it seems to spin pretty easily. Now that I have all that mass, kind of like the flywheel effect. We shall see what we shall see. Stay tuned. All right, so I took the rotor off and hooked up a meter to just one of the coils on the um, on the stepper motor. I would, of course, run the, the two coils that are in. I'll either run them in series or in parallel. I'm not sure yet. But I put a little crank on there, and you can see just by barely turning it, I'm getting like two volts. So having it spin really, really fast with two coils in series will probably probably produce some decent voltage. But I'm thinking I might run them in parallel because I want to see if I can run another pulse motor off of the output of the stepper motor. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to run them in parallel to get more current versus more voltage. 
So let me get this puppy together. I'm still waiting on the printouts for the stands for the two coils. Um, it's going to take a couple of hours for that. I could just dig up a couple of pieces of wood that are 20 millimeters thick and just extend this guy. Or actually, I could take the whole thing and just put it on a sheet of plastic, which I believe I have. Um, uh, maybe, no, I don't think I do have it. Anyway, I'm in no hurry. All right, guys, stay tuned. All right, so while I'm waiting for my 3D printer to produce two stands for these coils, I'm messing around with this breadboard, which I had to dig to find. I can't believe it. I have them all over the place when I don't need them. And as soon as I need one, right, I really got to clean this shop up, man. It is a disaster. Those are all some tools that I got from my brother-in-law that I talked about in an earlier video. God rest his soul. Um, he was a good guy. So I've got, I've, I've isolated the two coils have them on this breadboard with these two connectors. I will probably connect them in series at first on the output here just to see how much voltage I could get from the spinning rotor, that beast right there. And thank you to the guys who didn't automatically say, oh, it's not going to work. Because of the torque, which I get, I get. But then thank you to the guys who suggested, I think G-Law or Magnus Attractus and another guy suggested that I just get more leverage, make the, the rotor arms longer, heavier, and that might work. And it did work, which is really cool. Learn something new every day. I mean, I kind of knew that, but I, I really had my doubts. I was kind of leaning towards it's not going to work because even though this is not a Bedini circuit, um, I didn't think I could get enough torque out of it. But then I remember that I had these two monster coils from my RD3DP uh, Newman motor, which I'm definitely going to put back together again. And it worked. It produced plenty of torque, enough to spin this, this uh, stepper motor here. It's a little tight all of a sudden. I am spinning it with my fingers. All right, so let me see where we are with the printer. And I'll see you guys in a few. Stay tuned. You know what I keep forgetting? That I have two output terminals on this dual JL94 circuit as it is. And these things put out a lot of uh, current, um, a lot of voltage. I could tie everything together. I think I tried that one time though, and it didn't work out too well. I'm not sure why, probably because of the resistance. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave these because these kind of are there to protect the um, along with the neon bulbs, they're there to protect the, the chips here, the transistors. Um, but, I mean, I could still tie it in to the, uh, to the output, but I want to see how much I can get just from the stepper motor itself. And I got this idea, I don't know, I was perusing... YouTube as I always do and I saw somebody using stepper motors as a generator a while back and I thought hmm let me check that out all right stay tuned so I've been playing around with the idea of 3d printing out my avatar the Felix the cat thing and no I don't think this little tiny light piece is going to upset the balance of this rotor but yeah, I was thinking how I can incorporate it into my parts 
and I know how to do that. I'm just wondering if, and I, and I actually did this one freehand. I copied a picture of it, um, imported it into Fusion, and then freehand it. Because the one that I downloaded from Fusion was, or that I downloaded from Thingiverse had a lot of errors in it. So it came out okay. Kind of goofy. Anyway, I'm getting ready to start this puppy up. I've got it all set up. Uh, yeah. So all I need to do is... Uh-oh, wait a minute. I got to fix something. Stay tuned. All right. So it's going. I'm getting about 8 volts out of the stepper motor. If I turn this up a little bit, I might get a little bit more juice out of it. 10 volts. Yeah, it's going pretty good now. I don't have the coils in the right position. There's 14 volts. That's not too bad. And I have them in series. Yeah, so I guess tops off about 14 volts out of the stepper motor, about 15 volts into the system itself. So if I turn it down a little bit, Thirteen and third, so fourteen volts in, about thirteen six out. It's just really an experiment, just to see if I could do it. Cause when I tried it the first couple of times, it did not work, for you know obvious reasons. There's a lot of torque in these stepper motors, but this big rotor seems to do the trick. Yeah, 13.7. Let's turn it down a little. Well, let's turn it up a little bit. There's like 19 volts. 16 coming out of the stepper motor. Getting solid lights on the output here. I've got to raise these coils up. They're not in the optimal position. So 16.8 volts coming out of the stepper motor. Not bad. I'm going to try next to, here, let me turn this down so I don't burn out the, I don't burn out my, uh, what you call it. So 12 volts in, 12 volts out. Yeah, so not very efficient, but again, I just wanted to see if I could do it. That was the whole purpose of this whole thing. All right, not bad. 11 volts in, 12 volts out. Eh, it's not, it's not too bad. I printed out the other stand for the coil. All right, I think that's gonna be it for now. Again, I just wanted to see if I can make it work, and I did. So thanks for watching.